Twelve Marines need to reach an island 180 miles offshore. Enemy radar sweeps the skies. Sonar arrays guard the depths. Surface vessels would be spotted and sunk before covering half the distance. Traditional aircraft need runways that don't exist. Helicopters lack the range. Submarines move too slowly and can't deliver troops to shore. But there's another option, one that flies like an aircraft, lands like a boat, and remains invisible to both radar and sonar by skimming just five feet above the ocean surface. The U.S. Marine Corps has invested over $14 million developing this capability, learning from the Soviet Union's failed attempt to master sea skimming flight three decades ago. Their 280-ton Akronoplan never saw combat, but America's all-electric sea glider is designed to succeed where the Soviets failed, delivering combat power to any shoreline on Earth. War over water. As 2024 drew to a close, a strike package of Marine Corps F-35B Lightning II stealth fighters lifted off from Arizona, alongside two C-17 Globemaster III transport aircraft. The group was bound for the windswept runway of San Clemente Island, a rugged military outpost 65 miles off the California coast. But before they could reach their destination in the Pacific, a fleet of agile fifth-generation fighters and aggressor jets came rushing in to intercept them. The F-35s took the lead, slipping into formation to execute an offensive counter-air sweep, blocking the incoming patrols guarding the skies above San Clemente. Behind them, the C-17s hugged the terrain, flying just 300 feet above the ocean surface to avoid radar detection. As the island defenders reformed for a second attempt to stop the incoming aircraft from touching down on the runway, the F-35s transitioned into defensive counter-air rolls, circling above the ground while the C-17s descended. The transports delivered troops, fuel, and precision ordnance onto the tarmac with rapid efficiency, establishing a stronghold in minutes. This carefully choreographed exercise was built to mirror what actual warfare in the Indo-Pacific could look like. It sought to validate a new method of warfare, one built around rapid insertion, low signature infiltration, and runway independent operations. And it worked. Lieutenant Colonel Robert Guyette, commander of the Black Sheep Marine Squadron, confirmed, quote, We're able to insert the entire Marine Corps team on the objective. Every weapon, every refueling system needed to fight and sustain ourselves inside the enemy's weapons engagement zone. This is precisely why a new class of vehicle is quietly being prepared to join the fight, promising to give the U.S. safe entry into any coastline. A new type of bird. Rhode Island-based Regent Craft is building something never seen on the battlefield, a vessel that floats like a boat, takes off like a hydroplane, and flies just feet above the waves. It's called the Sea Glider, an electric-powered craft engineered to dart over the sea's surface, linking coastlines, islands, and remote outposts more efficiently than ever. This new breed of machine expands on the low-level insertion tactics already practiced by the C-17 Globemaster III while outmaneuvering enemy radar and sonar systems. Regent's design is rooted in three phases of motion, float, foil, and fly. The craft begins as a waterborne vessel, gently bobbing in the surf at about 12 knots. As speed builds, hydrofoils deploy, lifting the hull above the surface until it reaches a speed of 45 knots. Then, with enough lift, it transitions into flight, cruising just 5 to 30 feet above the sea. This low-altitude envelope gives it the speed of an aircraft with the operational flexibility of a boat, all while removing the need for a runway. While the concept may sound too ambitious, it has a historical precedent. In the last years of the Cold War, the Soviet Union unveiled the Project 903 Lund-class Akronoplan, a monstrous 240-foot-wide ground-effect vehicle weighing 280 tons, designed to fly mere feet above the water at blistering speed. It was officially classified as a naval vessel, poised to become the nation's newest defender against enemy ships. But despite its fearsome profile, the Akronoplan proved too unwieldy and was eventually retired in the 1990s. Today, Russia has no operational successor for Project 903, while Regent's Viceroy Sea Glider is rapidly gaining momentum. The U.S. Marine Corps has already invested over $14 million to help finance the development of a full-scale prototype of Viceroy, the model the company hopes will bring the nation to a new era of naval deployment. First to fly. Fully electric and radically efficient, 
The Viceroy is designed to skim just above the ocean at up to 180 miles per hour, ferrying 3,500 pounds of cargo, or 12 fully equipped marines directly into contested zones, taking off and landing directly into water. Matthew Koch, project manager at the Marine Corps Warfighting Laboratory, summed up its potential, quote, We're primarily looking at it for our contested logistics. There's a gap right now for high-speed transport, and this fits that gap. With its unique flight profile and amphibious versatility, the Viceroy can be used in multiple operations, such as infiltration, resupply, reconnaissance, and even medevac. In a future battlefield riddled with denied access zones and fractured infrastructure, Viceroy can carry medical teams deep into hot zones, reaching wounded troops long before traditional aircraft could ever land. With a 180-mile range on a single electric charge, the Viceroy will free American forces from the need to launch fuel convoys and vulnerable refueling stations in combat zones. Future variants are expected to be equipped with improved propulsion methods set to extend that range to nearly a thousand miles, allowing troops to reach faraway positions without a single drop of fuel. The Sea Glider boasts an autonomy-ready design, which, according to Regent Craft, will allow the Viceroy to eventually be controlled by ground units or even conduct fully independent operation on its own. Despite its advanced capabilities, the Viceroy aims to keep a low price. As Marine Corps Project Manager Koch explains, quote, Right now, we're looking at a price point between five and seven million dollars a copy. For comparison, a single C-17 Globemaster III costs around 340 million dollars, making the Viceroy a much more affordable option for military troops to deploy personnel across diverse regions. But before the Viceroy can live to its full potential, it first must prove it can handle takeoffs and landings, even in high seas and shifting winds. The Viceroy is currently undergoing float trials, testing its ability to maneuver and operate on water without taking flight. Later this year, the project will enter a new phase, hydrofoil-assisted takeoff testing, in which the craft will rise above the surface and demonstrate its ability to transition from waterborne to airborne flight. If trials go according to plan, the first operational Viceroy Sea Gliders could be delivered to the Marine Corps as early as next year, delivering one of the most versatile tools in the U.S. military's arsenal. The next step. But Regent Craft's ambitions don't stop with the Viceroy. In fact, the 12-passenger model is only the first wave in what the company sees as a complete revolution in maritime mobility. Their next creation is already taking shape. The Monarch will follow the same float, foil, and fly principles that power the Viceroy, but on a much larger scale. Designed to carry up to 100 passengers, this massive wing and ground effect vessel aims for a range between 300 and 500 miles on a single electric charge. If development stays on track, Monarch could be operational by the end of the decade. Regent's vision is part of a broader surge of innovation in naval aviation. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency launched its program to push sea skimming flight limits. Known as the Liberty Lifter X-Plane, the initiative seeks to build a large-scale wing and ground effect aircraft that can carry C-17-class payloads over the ocean without needing airstrips or deepwater ports. DARPA has tapped two giants of aerospace innovation to compete in this race. Aurora Flight Sciences, a Boeing subsidiary, has proposed a more traditional flying boat design with high wings and eight turboprop engines that can launch from water, fly through sea spray, and deliver troops and cargo. Meanwhile, General Atomics is taking a more radical approach. Their experimental concept features a twin-hull fuselage and a propulsion system that includes 12 turboshaft engines driving 10 propeller units in a highly unusual configuration. If successful, these platforms could transform how U.S. forces deploy across the globe. Entire platoons could be inserted behind enemy lines, skimming over the ocean and landing in uncharted territory. However, it's possible that these creations won't be limited to war zones. Regent is already preparing commercial variants of its sea gliders, facilitating civilian travel across coastal cities, island chains, and underserved maritime regions, replacing ferries and short-hop flights in places like the South Pacific, Southeast Asia, or even the Mediterranean. Although there's still some time to wait before these machines can fly in operational service, it's evident that the revolution of naval aviation has already begun, and the sea gliders are ready to take the lead. <laughs>